Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be an action and thriller movie from 2003 called Out of Time. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. The movie begins with Chief Matt Whitlock, a police officer who has just intercepted a drug dealer and seized both drugs and cash. Shortly after, Matt is seen reading newspaper reports about the crime he just thwarted. A few minutes later, he is approached by a man named Chris and his wife Anne. Matt and Chris clearly don't get along, and it's revealed that Matt is having an affair with Anne. Back at the station, Matt returns to his office where he is celebrated by his friend Jay, a fellow officer. The money Matt seized from the drug dealers is placed in his care until the government completes its investigation. During one of Matt's secret visits to Anne, they receive a call from a doctor requesting her presence at the hospital. Anne quickly gets ready and heads there. Upon arrival, the doctor informs her that she has cancer and only six months to live. Heartbroken, Anne is comforted by Matt. Around the same time, Anne discovers that Chris has changed their marriage insurance policies, increasing the payout in the event of a divorce. It becomes clear that Anne is unhappy in her marriage as Chris regularly beats her. Chris begins to grow suspicious of Anne's behavior. Anne and Matt later visit a lawyer who informs her that she can change the beneficiary of her insurance policy. The lawyer tells them that the new beneficiary will receive $750,000 from the insurance companies. One day, Chris confronts Matt, threatening to kill anyone he finds with his wife as he suspects Matt is involved. The following day, Anne plans to leave town and hands Matt a letter stating that he is now the new beneficiary. Matt decides to give Anne the drug money in his custody to help her escape, believing that the investigation into the seized money will take years due to its complexity. He arranges for her to meet him at his house that night. After waiting and calling for hours, Matt goes to Anne's house to find out why she hasn't shown up. However, when he arrives, the security lights turn on and dogs begin barking, alerting him that someone has noticed him. He decides to leave. The next morning, Matt, who spent the night in a nearby building, is awakened by the blaring sirens of the fire department. He rushes over and discovers that Anne's house has burned down completely. The police and fire department later determine that two people were inside the house during the fire. Devastated, Matt learns that a propane gas explosion caused the fire, though it seems unlikely unless it had been tampered with. Officer Alex, a detective, arrives to investigate the case. Together, Alex and Matt start looking into Anne's medical history, visiting several hospitals she had frequented in search of a suspect. However, during the investigation, Matt's involvement with Anne begins to surface as he had visited the hospitals with her and was recently made her beneficiary, putting him at risk of being exposed. Matt then devises various strategies to clear his name and keeps everything a secret from Officer Alex. However, their investigation leads them to Anne's private doctor who reveals that Anne did not actually have brain cancer as she had treated Anne just a few weeks ago. Matt suspects he's been scammed and rushes back to the hospital where Anne was diagnosed. Upon arrival, he discovers that someone has impersonated the real doctor. This revelation puts Matt under intense pressure. Fortunately, he notices a pen the fake doctor had touched, quickly picks it up, and takes it to a forensic specialist to retrieve fingerprints. Back at the station, Matt is almost exposed when the woman who saw him at Anne's house the night of the fire nearly recognizes him. However, no one takes her seriously as she is elderly. A few minutes later, a government officer calls, asking Matt to release the cash he had seized, but Matt stalls by claiming that it isn't standard procedure. Matt's luck seems to be running out when another officer discovers Anne's insurance file. The police hack into Anne's phone records to check her last calls, and Matt's number appears multiple times. Matt quickly removes the printout and convinces the officers that the printer is malfunctioning. While they wait for another printout, Matt rushes back to his office, hacks into the phone records, and deletes his number. Matt is almost caught again when his phone number shows up on another printout, but his friend Jay covers for him by claiming he was the one who called Anne to discuss her health. Jay apologizes to the other officers, explaining that he had forgotten to mention it. Afterward, Jay confronts Matt and asks him what's going on. Matt confesses everything to Jay. However, when Jay advises Matt to confess to Alex, Matt refuses, knowing that the evidence against him is overwhelming. It is also revealed that Officer Alex is Matt's ex-wife, and they are in the process of getting a divorce. While they are still talking, Matt receives a call from the forensic specialist, who informs him that they've identified the person whose fingerprints were on the pen. The man's name is Paul Cabin. Matt and Jay rush to Paul's house, but do not find him there. A few minutes later, the police also learn about Paul Cabin, but Matt manages to locate him first. On his way out, federal officers stop Matt, demanding the money. Matt lies, telling them he has already sent it and that it's on the way. Matt heads to the hotel where Paul is staying and manages to find out his room number. Upon entering the room, Paul attacks him, and the two engage in a fight. 
During the struggle, Paul falls over the balcony and dies. As this happens, someone spots Matt at the top. Matt quickly collects the money and rushes downstairs, knowing the police are closing in. While escaping, the receptionist who helped Matt earlier recognizes him and reports him to the police. Mistakenly believing Matt is Paul Cabin, the police begin chasing him. During the chase, Matt reveals himself to Alex, claiming he was following the police and hasn't seen anyone where the money was dropped. As he tries to escape the building, he runs into the receptionist again. Before the receptionist can alert anyone, Matt knocks him out and slips outside. Meanwhile, Alex begins to suspect Matt and asks if there's anything he needs to confess, but he denies it. Back at the station, the police summoned the receptionist who saw Paul. However, before the receptionist arrives, Matt receives a call from a woman. It appears to be Anne. Matt is shocked by this. Anne explains that it was all part of Chris's plan and that the bodies in the fire were not theirs but were cadavers from the morgue. She tells Matt that Chris forced her to go along with it and threatened to kill her. Meanwhile, Alex's suspicions continue to grow. When the receptionist arrives, Matt sneaks out of the station through a window in the restroom. Moments after he escapes, Alex receives a call confirming that Matt is the beneficiary of Anne's insurance policy. She rushes to the restroom, but Matt is already gone. Simultaneously, government officers arrive at the station looking for Matt, realizing that he has been deceiving everyone. Matt rushes to the location Anne gave him. Meanwhile, he and Jay are still working together. Matt arrives at the abandoned building with the money, ready to exchange it for Anne. As he enters, Chris attacks him, and they engage in a fierce fight. During the struggle, Anne picks up a gun from the floor and shoots Chris. Shockingly, after shooting Chris, Anne turns the gun on Matt. He pleads with her to drop the gun, but she refuses and demands that he drop the money. After taking the money, she shoots him in the leg while they continue arguing. Just as she is about to shoot him again, Alex arrives and shoots Anne from behind. Alex then questions Matt about Paul's death and the money, only to discover that Matt didn't actually bring the money as the briefcase was empty. Finally, other police officers and an ambulance arrive. While Matt's injuries are being treated, government officers show up and demand the money. Fortunately, Jay, who had been holding the real money, steps in and hands it over to them. He explains that Matt gave him the wrong address and that his car had broken down. Afterward, Alex talks with Matt for a while and he is taken to the hospital. In the final scene, Alex calls off the divorce and moves back in with Matt. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.